on perfusion. So which is a non-invasive method of detection of a PDR. So you can see here again a patient with a color fundus picture and you can see in the periphery in the red boxes uh, nice uh, new vessels and uh, so I usually simplify diabetic retinopathy as red dot, yellow dot and flowers and so the flowers can be very easily seen in this wide angle octa. So this is another uh, latest in the form of investigations that we have. And in the form of medical management, so whenever a patient, as I said, diabetic macular edema is the most common sight threatening retinopathy. So when the medical macular edema comes, the important culprit for the macular edema is the vascular endothelial growth factor. So all our management cornerstones in the form of anti-vascular endothelial growth factor agents, anti-VEGF agents, uh, uh, we have a uh, number of agents. And in this uh, uh, flow chart, the two things are missing. Uh, 2S, that is the systemic control and the steroids. So these are again, also very important player where diabetic retinopathy also has some kind of inflammatory pathology. So in the patients who have already underwent cataract surgery and all, we might go for a steroids as a first layer of management because there is no risk of any cataract progression. And uh, definitely uh, these are all the drugs that we, are, we do, uh, anti-VEGF agents uh, like uh, ranibizumab, aflubricep, these are all anti-VEGF agents and the down implant that we showing is the steroid implant. But what is my uh, usually practice is whenever a patient comes with a diabetic macular edema, the first thing we do is the diabetic profile. And you can see this patient, you can see that uh, our uh, HbA1c's will be sometimes like a hemoglobin when the patient reaches like 18 and uh, even 17 also we have seen. And uh, the, this patient has a, such an uh, unstable diabetic profile along with the hemoglobin nephropathy. And you can see the macular edema pre-systemic control 20 by 100. And this patient, we don't jump immediately to any anti vegf injection. We ask them to uh, first partner with the physician and have a control of the blood sugars, blood pressure also. And then when they come back in one month, you can see that the vision also improved and the edema also has subsided. And this investigation is a OCT, which is again a non-invasively. We can just uh, like a histological biopsy of the macula and it gives us the macular edema management. So systemic management makes a very, very important role. And we always tell to the patient that the systemic therapy and along with your uh, um, whatever we do in the form of injections and all will only act like a physiotherapy. And this is a patient, again, probably all of you are um, uh, seeing probably a session also catering to this, the keto diet. So this is a patient of mine uh, who is a software engineer and who had a proliferative diabetic retinopathy in both eyes. And she actually uh, had a, a tractional detachment of the macula. You can see the upper picture uh, where uh, pre-keto diet. And she, I advised actually surgery for her. And then she lost for follow-up. And after six months, she called me and said, Ki, today I'm coming for checkup. And I was really worried that what will be the actual the status of uh, thing but she actually did with an internist consultation she was an educated lady with all that and she actually achieved the diabetes reversal and what for me surprise pleasant surprise was her retinopathy which was supposed to be a surgical management which actually kind of uh, reversed and actually macular edema also kind of reversed and tractional detachment also got reversed so this is something uh, a, a, again says that the baseline management under management is the systemic management but we are all here because this is something uh, uh, 32 year old type 1 diabetes and a physician who never had an examination and uh, had some laser and then is an advanced diabetic retinopathy and these are all um, uh, we can see that uh, these uh, videos usually will be edited to only one minute but uh, this is how an advanced diabetic retinopathy will present and these surgeries we try to do uh, we have micro uh, vitreous surgery so we are able to intervene with the uh, instruments and everything and we try to dissect these membranes and to find so the uh, the patient uh, could be having some simple vitreous hemorrhage or it can be an advanced tractional retinal detachment where the entire flower is actually plastered to the retinal surface. So we try to actually look, uh, find his macula and the disc. And this is like a two and a half hour surgery where the patient and the, uh, the consultant and the team are partners. And in terms of, and then we usually do uh, hemostasis and then we also, uh, if the patient is on, uh, uh, like we also as advise them to go for a heparin free dialysis so that we don't have so much bleeding during the surgery. Uh, but with uh, advances in technology, we are able to get anatomical results very well. There is no doubt about it. And we do a laser 
and then do the print. So this is the post-op picture. You can see that earlier and earlier. You are now able to see the disc and macula, but the visual acuity is only from uh, whatever hand movements to now it is around 624. So uh, we cannot get the anatomical attachment could be there, but the functional results may not be uh, matching to that because of the late presentations. And system management and diabetic neuropathy, I don't think uh, um, we can, uh, I can talk in this before of this August audience, but uh, in general, we have uh, trials which are going about semaglutinated studies are ongoing to know the effect. Mm, glitogens, yes, they do worsen uh, DME. So we do ask the history whenever we, if patients have come with a refractory DME. And uh, hypertension, definitely blood pressure control is something which doesn't have any metabolic memory. We do stress that they have to maintain that. And uh, of course, ACE inhibitors can be a choice if there is also uh, underlying nephropathy. And uh, phenofibrate, there is a definitely a um, lot of uh, um, uh, promise that it can actually have a protective effect for the diabetic retinopathy progression. And anemia is again a significant uh, factor which indicates again could be an underlying nephropathy. So that is also something we actually look into whenever we treat these patients. And obesity and then uh, diet management, yes, especially does have a link to the diabetic retinopathy. So last two slides, I would just say that the physician-led screening model is a very important idea. Just before coming on to this talk, I was telling uh, Dr. Shyam and Dr. Bhavani that we should have a uh, next time co conference, we should have a fundus photography screening here. Uh, as a, for all the physicians and then we should have a small workshop how it can be done because we need to understand that the, you are the first person to come in contact with the people diabetes and uh, only 5 to 10 percent of diabetic retinopathy is actually sight threatening or referable. 90 to 95 percent of diabetic retinopathy is actually by the internist management and it is only a image based diagnosis and identifying diabetic retinopathy by fundus photography is not a robotic science and we have now cam which are inbuilt A models, but I would encourage that the physicians as well as the people who handle the cameras should know something about diabetic retinopathy so that we can have a better yield of images. Mm, and it should be definitely a part of uh, battery of investigations that will be done, like either TUDE ECO or an ECG. A fundus camera should be uh, part of the thing. And definite, uh, I would say that is a in terms of return of investment, it has a great social impact with reducing blindness due to uh, diabetic retinopathy. And then uh, this is a last slide why I should be trained in diabetic retinopathy. So uh, he is actually Nazi Almudin. He came from an endocrinologist. He came from Bahrain and he spent one week with us and he actually finished a, uh, an online course mm, we actually offer uh, in terms of online module I will actually uh, give these uh, links to the all of you mm, and which can be just free courses and uh, by that what will happen is how to have this diabetic retinopathy um, having basic understanding of the classification and what are the models, one can definitely, we should have an integrated model because this is something we can only integrated model uh, only can achieve. So prevent diabetic retinopathy blindness so that all may see. Thank you. Only 10% likely to have what I showed one or two pictures where you have just one or two hemorrhages in the periphery. So I would say that, uh, and also most important as I said is sight threatening retinopathy uh, if you see 20 people have, have diabetic retinopathy, 10 people can have sight threatening. In that, 8 people are macular edema. So the macular edema are, uh, when you have that, those hard x rays and all, they will be in the central, your 5 degrees. So your 90% of your retinopathy can be picked up by your single fundus photograph. Macular should be in the center. And then whenever visual equity is less than 612, and then just a small vision chart, and you can even need not have vision chart. Now we have something called peak visual equity, which can be just loaded in your uh, tablet or in uh, your uh, phone. And the patient even can self-administer the test also. The caregiver can administer. So along with these two things, we will be able to achieve 90% of retinopathy can be detected. Uh, Madam, one last question. Yeah. You mentioned about diabetic retinopathy and phenofibrates. Is the phenofibrates on top of statins or is it uh, just the phenofibrates alone? Uh, means the trial wise they actually did only the phenofibrates. But uh, we know that now people uh, start the statins in many different uh, combinations. So this is again where our collaboration should help because whatever study I am quoting is about from the ACARD I study and ACARD study where they used phenofibrate and what they found is even if the patient doesn't have high lipid levels, 
even in eulipidemi also you the phenofibrillin seems to be because of its anti peroxidase effect it seems to have protective effect on diabetic retinopathy so even if the lipid levels are normal uh, madam nice talk the uh, when it comes to diabetic retinopathy what section of people will have a single eye sight threatening retinopathy in your practice uh, like if you see uh, if there are 100 diabetic retinopathy patients why some of them have only uh, is it due to local factors that they lose vision in one eye the other eye is relatively background retinopathy what could be the reason uh, you see many times uh, what will happen in our clinics especially when we see in the hospital based patients one eye they come to you with some complaint and then they'll have some vitreous hemorrhage and we always feel that that eye is actually has the very serious complication but in other eye when we do structures like wide angle octahedral we see nice flowers everywhere so the retinopathy uh, need not be having same uh, level of crt so those hemorrhages in all four quadrants are some kind of uh, uh, fibrous tissue may not look like as if it will look like a moderate diabetic retinopathy you know one dot or one hemorrhage and when we did this test we found that more than third of the people actually in that other eye also had the proliferative diabetic retinopathy so one eye being that is most common but otherwise also sometimes we do have asymmetric diabetic retinopathy where we say that one eye has a pdr and other eye has a mild at least two levels less than severity those we see especially with the carotid if they have carotid any obstruction or if they have in that eye where they have minus power like myopia or if they have a glaucoma so because there is already a less oxygen supply or something like that that eye may be having less retinopathy and other eye where there is an obstruction it is there like carotid that ipsilateral eye will have the severe retinopathy thank you ma'am thank you thank you very much